everybody. It's me, Jackie Clayton, editor with Recruiting Daily, and I'm really glad that you're here. Um, remember, Recruiting Live is not about PowerPoints or big, you know, pre-done presentations. This is a Q&A for you, where we talk to real people about real things that are affecting us as recruiters. So if you have questions, Make sure that you put them in the question bar down there. You are all muted, so the only way we can get those questions is if you put them in the box. You can also tweet them out with the hashtag rdaily, and we will be sure and get those answered. So I appreciate you for that. That being said, today we are joined by Lucia founder, Asaf Eisenstein. Can you just tell us a little bit about what a Chrome extension actually is? Yes, sure. So when you browse the internet, your browser is talking to the server of the site and in order to allow some flexibility to this user experience, what the Chrome extension uh, allow is provide developers with the ability to interact with some of the content that the server get back. So let's assume that you're browsing Amazon now and if you're using a Chrome extension, I can read the page, I can see the product that you're viewing and I can do all kind of enrichment or, or do all kind of interaction with the content of this page. So it's a, basically it's a tool that allows some kind of flexibility when you're browsing the internet. Got it. So here's another question that we were, you know, in, in talking about that. So tell me a little bit about what is going on right now with LinkedIn. We talked about several people on uh, using LinkedIn because of various Chrome extensions have been put in what they're calling LinkedIn jail. <laughs> so I prefer this. I prefer this when we're going to talk about LinkedIn jail. And <laughs> the idea, the idea about LinkedIn is very simple. Um, LinkedIn is a is a social network. They have data of people. And they, they're taking great care, and there's nothing new about it. I mean, there's a lot of panic in the last few weeks, but this thing is going for several years now. LinkedIn is very protective on their profiles of the people, and the reason they're doing it is because if people will feel that the data they share on LinkedIn is, is kind of like open, they will be afraid they will block their accounts. This is their official arguments. And we need to distinction between, between the, the data that it's on public places, that like on f pages, like when you browse incognito and it's outside on, on Google, to the, the content that you see that you, while you're browsing and, and when you're logged in. Because when you're logged in, you see information that it's supposed to be open only to members, which is more sensitive, which is more private. And it started by, I mean, there's nothing new about it. I mean, LinkedIn is blocking accounts for several years by now. And what their main concern is that plugin are taking data from LinkedIn, saving it to the plugin company server, and then do all kind of stuff with it. I mean, I mean, the, the worst scenario from their point of view, if I understand right, is let's say that the Chrome extension is taking data from the, from the, the LinkedIn profiles and then build a search engine for profiles, which is kind of competing with their service. Um, this is a big no-no. Another thing is that Chrome extension that without, your, uh, without you knowing about it, loading a lot of pages from LinkedIn. When you're browsing, you're thinking that you're viewing only one profile, but the Chrome extension is actually um, loading tens of, or like hundreds of pages sucking this data and save it to, to the, the plugin servers without you knowing about it. Right. So this is, um, so this is another, another issue that's that happening. Now another thing to say about this is that there's nothing new. I mean, these things is going on, I mean, for more than three, four years. Uh, LinkedIn closed their public API about a year ago. Uh, they were sending cease and desist letters to all kind of companies in the last two, three years. Um, there's nothing new. Nothing happened. I mean, just to explain, because I know some people might not know the language. It is a little bit technical. But an API, basically, um, they had a public API so that you could create tool A that would go in between the two software platforms. So it was like this company could talk to LinkedIn, get the information, share it back to this company, and then give it out to the public, the people that registered. 
Yeah, exactly. API is the official way to communicate with the database. When I offer an API to Lucia, uh, I allow you as a developer to communicate with our data and, and interact with it and, and get the information that you're interested with. The plugins are, in a way, the, the, the plugins that are doing the, the bad things are, in fact, uh, kind of like a bypass because LinkedIn decided they're closing the public API. So what people were doing, they were using the plugins in order to get the data which is not officially available. Right. Well, and, and you brought up a good question, uh, a good point, because um, it kind of leads me to my next question of, how does Lucia get all of the information? I think I was telling you, people asked, you let me know, it wasn't as, as you know, the, what the magic part was of, of Lucia, but how are you getting the data and how, you know, and sharing it with us? Can you explain okay. to people a little bit about Lucia specifically? Yeah, sure. So basically Lucia is a, um, is a data company. I mean, the plugin is just one product we released, but the, on the core of Lucia, there is a database of almost four billion records. Four billion, it's a lot. Yeah. And it's mostly, <laughs> stay with me, uh, and it's mostly personal phone numbers and personal emails. Uh, we do have some work emails, but this is not our focus. I mean, there's tons of other services that provide work emails. Our focus is with direct dials. And actually, I mean, I, people ask me this question like 10 times a day, uh, but the magic of Lucia is not the database. Buying database from legitimate business partner is, is, is the easy part. I mean, there's tons of, of, of companies that sell legitimate data from all kind of places. I mean, yellow pages companies, uh, public databases. You just need to know how to buy it. This is not where the magic is. The magic is once you buy this data, how you process it and how you search it. Because when you have a James Smith in London, New York, or LA, and there's 5,000, how do you make sure that this James Smith that work for Walmart is exactly the person you're looking for? So this is where the magic of Lucia is, is the, the search algorithm. Uh, and it's also about uh, finding enough data points to work with and to verify it and do it in, in split of a second. So the data is, is, is rather straightforward. It's more about what you do with the data. This now, is what's the... Uh, I, I have to interrupt and get here because um, everyone was asking this question. Lee asked, Debbie, uh, Showalter asked, Steve asked, Christy Lee, even Recruiting Animal, hi Animal, asked. They were all saying, okay, we love the Lucia tool. Are we going to go to jail? Are we going all going to be going to LinkedIn jail? Okay, Andrew? so this is, this is a great question. And let me say a few things for the record about the LinkedIn jail about Lucia. First of all, and we put it on our privacy policy. We don't take data from LinkedIn. Um, what we do and when we work with Lucia is when you're searching the page, Lucia is looking on the page, is reading it, and what we're doing is something which is very similar to OCR. It's kind of like we're looking, we're scanning it, we're matching it, we return the results. We're not taking data from LinkedIn in any way. We don't save data from LinkedIn. Um, you Based What's on what you said, you said you have more data than, than LinkedIn. Exactly. Basically. Sometimes people tell me, okay, like I see an email on the profile and still Lucia didn't find anything. How this, this thing can happen? Because the person wrote his email or phone number on his profile. Why why you say me there is no results? And the reason is because the plugin is work exclusively with the database. And the only thing we check is the name and and company and we compare it but we don't take it. We don't build a database out of the profile. So even if there is an email or phone number available on the page, Lucia will not display it because we don't read this information. Now, let me tell you another thing. We're not going to provide a search engine for profiles because on our database, we don't have fields like job titles and skills and universities and, and all kind of the, the, the search parameter that, that build the profile. We don't have these kind of fields on our database. The only thing that we have on our database is phone numbers, a lot of phone numbers, and, and emails. Uh, so I feel very safe sitting here saying to you that, that we feel comfortable saying to LinkedIn we're not violating your uh, terms and conditions. 
um, and we respect the, the rules. I mean, they, they, they want to protect the data of the users. We don't take the data from the users. And I'm glad that you're here. I mean, a lot um, that was part of our, our conversation that we were having personally and why I'm glad that we can share with the public what's going on with that because there was a, um, a, a Facebook post and it basically was like, get rid of all of your extensions. It was like, wait, we can't get rid of all of our extensions. So at least you're, you're um, bringing things um, clear, you know, bringing it to the surface. I will remind everybody, and this is, we have 12 minutes. We'll go a little bit longer because we did start a little bit later trying to get in there. But um, do ask your questions, and if I don't answer them on air, we'll give them to Asaf, and he'll be able to um, get those. Um, and so we'll be able to do that this way. And I know we're going to only talk about, uh, Lucia, people have questions about other um, technologies, I see lots of those coming up, and really, you know, all a soft can talk to is what he's doing, right? So that being said, I was going to ask you, so how, what do you think, with all of, you know, the information and, and data that's going there, what do you find, what do you think people are looking for most within these extensions or, you know, why did it take so long for you to get phone numbers or not you, but being able to get that mix? Because for years, we've never been able to get the phone numbers. And we know there's been several reports that nowadays people want not necessarily to be called, but they want to be texted. They don't want to be bothered at work. Um, emails are getting easier and easier to get. But why do you think it's been so elusive for people to get phone numbers. Well, I mean, this brings me to, to the reason that we built Lucia. I mean, because sending an email is fine, but people are bombarded with so many emails, and it's much easier to just ignore an email, you know, and, and when you try to recruit someone, you, you want to engage with them, you want to bring them into a conversation, the ability to, to pick up the phone and approach them and say, like, hey, like, I have something for you. Um, it, it's it's just get into the conversation. I mean, the, there's so many um, ways that with your voice, with like starting a conversation, just start to 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 see like, okay, do you want to hear? Do you want to know? Do you want to to kind of like learn more? There's so many ways that you can open it, and yet, I mean. I mean, I can tell you that I can hear from from our customers, and we have more than thirty thousand now that. Those that do phone, they use the phone, they do much, much more money. I mean, their KPIs are much stronger. They're pushing much more candidates into the funnels just because they're hitting the phone. And, and some people feel like they fear of the, the fear of rejection or whatever the reason that drive them from away from calling, it's her, actually is her, harming their performance because it's, it's much easier just to hit emails, sending loads of automatic emails or tell yourself that you personalize those emails and, and, and your hit rate is great. But, I mean, I see people that make 50, 60 calls a day and most of the people just want like a conversation, you know. If you get them on a good time and, and they're happy to go into it and, and you sounds good and you know their industry and you know what to talk about, they will go into the conversation and sometimes they will not be interested but they will give you the name or number of a person they know who might be a good fit. So. There is no replacement for phone number, and this is the reason that that I I mean this this industry is is packed. I mean there's hundreds of, of plugins. I mean, uh, but when I started it, I mean it was an idea that I was playing with, and I throw it to a few developers in Ukraine. Told them, okay, like you go and try out this. I mean, get back to me in a few months if you see it's serious. But I mean, once I saw the numbers, I said, okay, this idea is is working, and. Uh, and ever since, it's it's, it's working well. It, 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 it has changed the, from the beginning, obviously. Lucia got a new look. Lucia had a little uh, <laughs> a little surgery. So yeah, she... yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel uncomfortable, like, wrinkling her. She, is, she should be treated nicely. That's right. That's right. Um, oh, and here was a question, a great question. Someone asked, um, Mark Vogel's here. Appreciate it. He's one of our uh, HRTX ambassadors. Always, you know, 
power to people. But he asked, what sites do, will Lucia work on? We know LinkedIn is one of those, but um, what other sites do they work on? And what are the plans for the future? Okay, so it's also available on Twitter. And we're playing on beta for a long period with Facebook. Um, we just want it to work like properly, like to our standards. We're not happy with performance yet, but Facebook is the next step. And then there's tons of people in Europe that asking for uh, Zing. And we also have some ideas to, to put it on Indeed on Monster and those sites. I mean, uh, it's all based on, uh, on demand. I mean, I don't know, if people are interested with this, just let us know and we'll be happy to, to do it for you. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And just uh, so you know, they, they are really yeah. transparent at Lucia. If you can ask, you can, if you, something's going on and you want them to change it or want it to fix it, they're really easy. So <laughs> he's very responsive. Um, I know that I want, he, I want to get, Jackie, I want to go back for a second to LinkedIn and, and just finalize the topic. Um, okay. one of the things that we, we understood in the last few weeks is that because people so panic and, and some of them like, like okay, my, my account will be hacked or like blocked or whatever, then we kind of, well, we build a search engine on our website and we're going to release it in a week time. So people that feel like whatever the reason is or they feel uncomfortable using the Chrome plugin for now or, and they still need to do their job. So we're going to provide the option to search for, for phone numbers and email directly on our website without the need to, to put any Chrome plugin. Uh, and it, it's going to be available in a week or something or so, but it's, it's already like nearly done and we're testing it now. Um, and, and I think it, should, it will be a great solution to those people that are afraid. Um, but I mean, there's, there's another thing to say. I mean, if LinkedIn will close the accounts, they're shooting themselves in the leg. I mean, they will have no customers. I mean, they're, they're making their revenue from recruiters. So, right. in a way, I think their gun is empty. I mean, they can't block the recruiter's account because who's going to pay them? I mean, this is their value, is that the money they make from recruiters. So, I don't think they really can, can do something like that. I mean, and... Well, and actually, um, Balbi, I appreciate you being here, asking a question along those same lines about how can we determine if an extension is collecting the information from data? Like, is it something we can we would know? And and are they required like you did to um, like make the information public? Like, what? How can you tell if you're for? So this is this is another topic which I think caused a lot of confusion because most people that I see are using like at least ten, if not twenty or so different Chrome extension, and a lot of people are not very careful when they downloading, when they trying, when they're in all kind of services, and it's very difficult for them to know. I mean, and, and again, I mean, the amount of people that were blocked, I mean, I think you can count them on one hand. I mean, we have 30,000 users, and I've been checking daily, like I'm asking the support people, show me the tickets. Like, I want to know if someone, something happened to them because of them, because of us, and as of now, I mean, and I'm checking it daily, I'm not aware of any person that was stopped because of us. But what I, what I do hear from people, and again, like, I've been asked here, and maybe like one or two people told us like they were, they gave this warning letter or something like that, and then asked, okay, what plugin are you look, you're using? And the guy is using, like, you, you take a look, and there are like 50 different plugins. So it's very, uh, people need to be cautious and, I mean, my recommendation is to build a very small stack of tools that you trust. Obviously, there is no one tool that will solve all your solution. I mean, there's no, I mean, as much as I'm biased, um, <laughs> there is no one tool that will do everything for you. There's never going to be 100% uh, success rate. You always need to work with a combination of a few. But choose like maybe two or three or whatever the number you feel comfortable and minimize it. And my recommendation is to try to stay away from tools that extract data outside. Uh, those kind of tools will put you in trouble. I mean, everything that takes data from the, the, the page itself, outside to spreadsheets, to all kind of, of uh, outside external uh, places, this is exactly what uh, LinkedIn don't like, people well, taking data. There's another part that I think, um, not to uh, disrupt that, but I think that 
one of the things that happened before, and this is while it was still open API and people didn't realize, is that in order to use some of the Chrome extensions, you had to sign in with your LinkedIn account. And one easy way um, to just to cross reference was if you look at the accounts, you can see what you looked at recently, and you know you didn't look at that account, then the Chrome extension was doing it on your behalf. And so that's a real easy check just to see, you know, look at or the suggested profiles and, and to look at that. I know that, that most of those tools have been shut down. Um, but that was well, a major point of contention of, of finding that out. Well, I think, I think every person should ask themselves and, and ask their vendors, like, can you verify that you're not taking data from LinkedIn? And are you sure that you're not violating the terms and condition of LinkedIn? And I feel very comfortable sitting here and say to you and the community that I feel comfortable that Lucia is not doing it. And what I think people should ask their vendors, like, okay, do you sure that you're not taking data from them? Because this is the this is the main the main topic they're talking about. The scrapers, they like they take data from it, and and this is the terms that that piss off LinkedIn. So any tool that can tell you that they feel comfortable that they're not taking data from LinkedIn, in my opinion, is on uh, like it's safe. But ask the questions. I mean. Right. Um, I can tell only only for ourselves. Like I'm not. I don't know what others are doing, but I mean, I feel very comfortable about what we're doing. Well, I'm looking. Dan Lux. I'm sorry, Laux. He taught me how to say his name last week. Dan Laux asked a question. Is there anything being worked on right now, Lucia? Like any new functionality? I know you're looking at some of the other tools to share, but um, you want to share some of the functionality that we can look for. Yeah. So, so first of all, our focus is always on the database. And with the database, we're looking on a few parameters. First of all is the hit rate, is how many times we're going to show you results. And I mean, at the moment, it's something around 60 to 70% hit rate uh, when you search people. So three or seven times out of 10, and I'm talking like globally, we're going to return results. And those numbers are going up when you look on, on senior people, C-level, technical people, so it can go up like 70, 80 percent. And if you look for entry level or blue color or stuff like that, it's go down. So Lucia is not the tool for truck drivers or, I don't know, people for fast food. But right. um, so, so we have the, the hit rate and another parameter is the is data integrity. It's also important. So if you want to increase your hit rate, you don't want to damage your uh, integrity. And then this is, this is a major focus all the time, and the product is keep evolving, and, and the algorithm and the data, it's a, it's a monster. Um, another thing we're working on is the API. And we just released it. And I mean, I, I'm not going to give names here, but there's a lot of tools out there that recruiters are using, some of them very famous companies that use, that Lucia is powering their their contact details, phone numbers, and emails. So they're using our API, and they they make their product better. Uh, obviously, we're not going to say their names, but it's uh, very popular services. And the API is also being used for a lot of other use cases. I mean, I have a few um, RPOs that have like their own database of like half a million candidates, two million candidates. They want to enrich it because they just have the number and phone number. Uh, they know the emails and they want the phone number. So people use the API for that. Um, and the next, the next major step is that we're working now with Salesforce, and we're about to release a major uh, product. Like just for Salesforce, is a, it's a native app. It's going to be on the App Exchange, and when people are working with their Salesforce, they can enrich data. So this That's is a lot. what we. Yeah, this is what we're working now, and uh, it's a lot of stuff, yeah. Oh, and we talked a minute, I think, didn't you say there was going to be a, a, the ability to use Lucia without without necessarily, are you launching something with Lucia like in the next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, this is, this is the search on the site, I mean, Got it. yeah, yeah, so this is going to be like from next week, so you can, you can start searching people on the website on Lucia without having a Chrome extension at all. This is for the, the, the people that are afraid from the LinkedIn chair. It's for them. Got it. <laughs> That's good. 
I'm so glad. <laughs> Henry Landau asked a question. Thanks for being here, Henry. Um, he was asking if it would be available on Instagram at some point. Have you tried playing around about using Instagram? I don't know if too many tools. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's tons of stuff. Like before, I think like GitHub is an interesting place. I mean, uh, Angelist. I mean, there's a ton of sites that probably we'll check before. The only thing is that we need some data to work with, and, and on Instagram sometimes we I don't know. We'll we'll try it out. <laughs> Andy G, hi Andy G, said, I like Lucia. Can I ask if they will rethink their stance on not rolling credits over monthly for small recruited mm -hmm. businesses? We might do a lot of research one month and nothing the next month. Yeah, I mean, we, we hear it once in a while. And what we, that we try to do with pricing is to be very affordable. Uh, but again, I mean, Lucia is not the cheapest service out there. And, but it all go back to what you get, you know. I mean, and I have this conversation with people all the time. Is what I mean, the smallest package is just like seventy-nine dollar a month or twenty-five with an annual contract. And you need to ask yourself what the ROI. I mean, how many people I'm going to place or, or bring to my company as a result of this service, and what's the ROI? And if the ROI is not like hundred times or whatever. It's not worth it. Um, and I know there's a lot of other tools there that are for free or whatever, and like, I mean, people talk to me about the price of Hunter or whatever, and it's like, we don't compare ourselves to these kind of services. I mean, we look on the tools that the salespeople are using, and, and over there, people pay more the dollar to, to get a content detail. So we are much less on that. I mean, it's like half of it. So pricing is still fair. The other thing is with the annual contract, it's 40% discount. So if you take the annual plan, it's, it's, it's very affordable. Well, I had to ask, right? I just had to. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean. I will say, and I know we're wrapping up, um, just full transparency. So I have asked several people to um, talk to me about Chrome extensions. Uh, and uh, Asaf was the first one. He jumped right in and it was like, don't be afraid to ask you the tough question. So I appreciate it. Um, I wasn't trying to make it just like a Lucia commercial, but again, we wanted to find out really how extensions work. I think you did a great job with that. I, I did want to mention next week um, on Recruiting Daily, we did um, have a third party company that actually did kind of a dare to compare about the results. So that's going to be going up on Recruiting Daily next week. Um, and also, we're starting our 12, it's called 12 Days of Sourcing that's coming up, so we want you to sign up for that. Um, this has been recorded, so everyone who's registered is going to get a um, the link that has our beautiful conversation. I do want to thank, you know, Asaf for being here, and I want to especially thank people who stopped by, Giselle and Robert and Andy and Debbie. It's like romper room we have to go through. Um, as a friendly reminder, next week we're going to have Tim Sackett on next Friday, uh, and that is going to prove to be interesting. He's kind of hard to control. We'll see how it went. Um, do, if you still have questions, you can put them out on Twitter or put them here. I'll make sure that a soft gets there, and I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you, Jackie. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.